Hey guys, this is Steve with Tronix Fix, and today we're going to review and tear down a fireball shooter. Now this fireball shooter has been on the market for several years now, and I have no idea how I didn't know about it, but I didn't know about it. So now that I do, let's take a look at it and let's get it torn down. First things first, let's get it out of the box. It looks like it comes with some extra fire paper and some cotton or something, I don't know. And here it is, it's called the Pyro Mini by Illusionist. I will put a link in the description if you'd like to purchase one of these for yourself. So this is the Pyro Mini hands-free fireball shooter. Let's get it out of the box and have a look at it. Okay, we've got a little uh, disclaimer, probably a good idea for a fireball shooter. To ensure proper use and care for your pyro unit, you must watch the instructional download before using this unit. Instructions, and here we have, it looks like the shooter unit right here. So we've got two holes right here. I didn't know this was a double barrel, but that's awesome. And here we have what looks like it must be the remote. And here we have, I have no idea what this is. Oh, maybe it's to, maybe to stuff the fireballs in here. Maybe. We'll look at that in a minute. What else do we have in here? We've got what looks like a USB charge cable. And it looks like a cleaner. And I don't know what this thing is with the wire headphone jack connector on it and maybe some sort of armband or something and then we also have a pair of straight tweezers okay so that that's what comes in it so that's what comes in the box let's see if we can get it working just like that and this needs to sit for at least 24 hours for at least 24 hours for at least 24 hours so that's a bummer. Apparently the cotton that you use comes wet and we have to let it dry for a minimum of 24 hours. So what we're gonna do is take this and spread it all out. And we will come back to this video in 24 hours so we can give it a test. There we go. Okay, back in 24 hours. And I'm back. I've let these dry for about 48 hours, both the cotton and the paper, so they should be plenty dry. Now it's time to see if we can get this thing working. So I have the unit charging right now, and I did watch some of their videos online, so I know a little bit more about what some of this stuff is for. So I'm gonna open this up and take just a quick look of what's in here. The first thing is we do have this antenna that plugs into the remote, and this will let me shoot it from up to 30 feet away, they say, which is pretty cool. So we've got that, and this is the plunger to help stuff the paper and the cotton down into the unit. And then we also have the charger. I have my own charger already set up here, so I'm not using this one, but this is just a USB charger. It can plug into computer or any other USB outlet to charge it. And then we have the cleaning brush as well. So I gotta let this charge for just a couple more minutes and then we'll put some cotton paper in there and see if we can get it to fire. Okay, so I think it's probably charged enough. We'd only been charging it for about 10 minutes or so, but we just wanna get one or two shots off just to make sure it works and so you guys can see how it works. Now, this is the first time I have ever shot this thing off. I, all I know is from what the videos I've seen on their website at Illusionist. So what I'm gonna do is take a little piece of cotton that looks like what he used in the video. Maybe a little too much here. I'm gonna roll it up in my fingers into a little ball. And then we're going to drop it in the barrel. Okay, looks good, I think. And then we're gonna take our paper. I have this pre-cut according to how they say to do it in the video. And we have this loading tool that we slide on here that will help us roll it up correctly, hopefully. Okay, and now we're gonna roll it up how they tell us to in the video. Pull that out. Now we got some loose ends here, that goes down in the same barrel the cotton went into. So we're gonna twist that around. Seems pretty good. Now this is the plunger. We're gonna plunge this in here until we feel a little bit of resistance. And theoretically that's loaded. So I'm gonna get 
all my tools out of the way and then we're gonna see if we can light this thing off. So now it's time to test light it. So I'm gonna dim the light so you can see it and we'll see what happens. Wow, now that looks cool. I might have to do some videos just like this. Okay, so I'm going to unplug it from the charger. And there are several different settings. We can set it to fire from the device itself or we can set it to fire from the remote. So I'm gonna set it to fire from the device itself, which is one click up and we have the red light. So theoretically, theoretically, it should be ready to fire. Let's see what it does. <laughs> That's amazing. That is probably one of the coolest devices I've seen in a very long time. So that is what the Pyro Mini looks like. That is way better than I imagined, and I'm gonna have to play with this a lot more. But first, I wanna see what it looks like inside, and I'm gonna take you guys along with me. Let's check it out. So we're gonna be focusing on tearing down the unit itself, and for that, it looks like we just need a Phillips screwdriver. We're gonna try starting with a Phillips double zero. Usually works for this sort of thing. Feels like the screws are coming out how they should. Okay, and that is one of the easiest devices I've opened in a very long time. So here is the reveal. So far, we've ju we're just showing the battery right here. It looks like we've just got four more screws to remove, and then we can see what's under this black plate. The battery is stuck on with adhesive, which is pretty normal. And it looks like the black plate just kind of snaps off. And here we have the inside of the device so far. One thing I noticed right away is this is hand soldered. You can see on the side of the device right here, this plastic has been burned by the soldering iron. And you can see even the wire is, is a little bit burned right there, which none of, that, none of that matters. It doesn't affect anything. It's just a matter of um, the fact that it looks like this is actually, uh, at least this part looks like it's hand built, which is kind of cool. Actually, I'm assuming this is built in the USA. I don't actually know. Um, it could be built in China like most things, but um, it's kind of cool. It looks like hand built. So we have this reinforcing foam right here by the charge port. And then looks like there's two screws holding the rest of this board down, this motherboard in here. So I will remove that adhesive. And then we have one screw over here and one screw over here. Theoretically, then this board can get, be pulled out. And here we have the board removed. Have to be careful, there is a button down in there that I don't wanna dislodge too much or just wanna keep track of. Here we have the firing button. It's red, ironically. I have no idea what that button's for. Here we have the two LEDs, one green LED and one red LED. And then this is the switch that you can choose whether you want it to be activated from the device itself or from the remote. So this is the back side of the motherboard that goes into the device. And on this side of the motherboard, we have the charge port, there's a diode here, two chips, and then we have several other chips on the motherboard. Now I'm not sure which of these chips control what, but very clearly it's a very simple motherboard. You don't need too much to get this thing to work, and that shows the inside of it. This wire looks loose. It's actually just the antenna for the remote. Now the only other thing really to this device is right here and right here. These are the heaters. These, I'm assuming, get extremely hot to ignite that cotton. That cotton ignites and starts shooting out of the barrel and then the fire paper also ignites that creates the big fireball. So this shows you the inside of the Pyro Mini. Now let's see if we can put it back together. The Pyro Mini is now back together. 
our buttons work how they should, and we're ready to have a lot more fun with this thing. Thanks for watching my review and teardown of the Pyro Mini. I will put a link in the description below if you would like to purchase one yourself. Keep in mind you do have to be 18 years or older. And also keep in mind this, as you saw in my video, is not something to mess around with. You could cause serious damage if you did not handle this properly. So whatever you do, please be careful and make sure and follow all of the rules and instructions on their website and that comes in the material with the kit. Please let me know what other videos you want to see. Leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. And thanks again for supporting my channel.